I think we can make a start and take a look at our first set of questions here. So can you tell me the what is this topic about? The examiner might say, you know, um, okay, um, now I'd like to ask you uh, some more general questions about yourself. Uh, it could be about time, exactly working time, time management, excellent. Your daily plan, your daily routine, uh, Simran. Uh, yep, you're absolutely right. This one is about your daily routine, okay? Very, very common. So let's take a look at the first question you might be asked. As you answer the question, it's good to have a structure in mind. Uh, this is a structure we often suggest students use uh, to answer part one, part three questions. First, answer the question directly. Then you can give a reason, okay? Why or why not? This is especially important in task in part one because the examiner will, can only ask you why as a follow-up question, okay? In, they might say like, do you like sport? Uh, why? Okay, in part three, the examiner is allowed to change the question a bit. They're allowed to extend the question. They're allowed to ask different follow-up questions. But in part one, the only thing that the examiner can ask you is why. So make life easier for them and give them the reason, give them the reason why uh, first, okay? You could then give an example, you could give an alternative, and then you can end by briefly summarizing your answer, okay? So keep this structure in mind as we're looking at the questions. Feel free to write example answers in the chat. I'll also give you um, some suggested answers too. So here we go. First question. Let's talk about routines. When do you wake up? When do you wake up? Uh, and I would answer this. I'd probably say, well, it really depends. Um, it depends if it's a weekday, then I'll usually wake up at about 6.30. Um, I like to have a bit of time before work. Uh, I might have a coffee and write in my journal and uh, maybe do some stretching. However, at the weekend, I'll wake up a bit later. I like to catch up on some sleep. I might wake up at about uh, 8 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. So yeah, really, it depends on uh, the day of the week, okay? Wow, okay, so very good guys. Most of you are saying, yeah, it depends, <laughs> but some of you very early risers, 5 a.m., yeah, you could say you're an early bird, okay? Yeah, exactly, Ramachandran, exactly, I'm an early bird. Okay, good. Um, just a reminder, guys, if you want to share your chat, your comments, all panelists and attendees in the chat, that will let everyone see your comments because there's some nice language here. Nargis, so you're saying you're a night owl. Yep, uh, uh, I can, I can uh, sympathize with that. Okay, good. Um, I saw a question there, can I list all the topics? Um, I can give you uh, an outline of the topics we're aware of a bit later on, okay? Um, for now, we'll go through some questions. Hashim, is a short answer enough? Um, you should try and give a developed answer. If you say, when do you wake up? Uh, I wake up, I usually wake up at 6 a.m. It's not long enough you you need to develop your answer. The ex if you say, I wake up at 6 a.m., the examiner will say, why, right? And they might even just gesture like this. They'll say, you know, like, tell me more, okay? Um, so you need to develop. One way to develop is to give a reason and an example. Okay, uh, let's see, guys. Next question. What's your daily routine? 
what's your daily routine? Okay, so I usually wake up at about 6.30. I'll do some work in the morning. I usually cook some lunch at around 12, 12.30. Um, after I finish work at about five or six in the evening, I like to relax by going out for a run. Um, that helps me to uh, put the day behind me, okay? Um, and then I'll usually go to bed about 10, 11 p.m., okay? So simple answer, right? Uh, excellent. I can see some good questions in the chat here. Um, if you can add them to the Q&A, we'll have some uh, time to discuss these after, okay? Also, if anyone is very interested in speaking, in giving an answer to these questions, uh, let me know in the chat and I can try to promote you to speak, okay? But please make sure you have your microphone working and you're ready to give a, a short answer, okay? Good. Right. So let's take a look. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Okay. Next question. Oop, we'll go back. Okay, good guys. I can see some volunteers in the chat. Um, once we go through these questions, I'll open it up and one or two of you can give an answer. Okay, so um, I'll keep you guys in mind. Uh, right, next question. What part of the day do you like the most? What part of the day do you like the most? <clears throat> well, I could say, well, for me, uh, yeah, I prefer the evening. Um, it's a time when I'm not working. It's the time when I can relax. And especially like when I go running, uh, I get to run out into the city. It's very restful. It's very relaxing and um, it's very meditative. So I really enjoy that part of my day. Um, it's the time I have for myself uh, to uh, be, uh, to process everything I need to process from the day. Okay, so that's my favorite time. Excellent. Okay, very nice answer, Sapan. Excellent, yeah. Very good, Varun. Yep. Some of you like the morning, some of you like the evening. Um, again, it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's about your personal preference, okay? So, last question for this topic. What would you like to change in your daily routine? What would you like to change in your daily routine? So, I'd say for me, um, ideally, I'd like to start waking up a little bit earlier and I could maybe do some more study. Um, I'm learning another language at the moment. If I could wake up a bit earlier, it would give me a bit more time to, uh, to study, uh, do my language study, maybe even go running in the morning as well. So, uh, but as you said, I'm a bit of a night owl. I don't find it easy to wake up in the morning. So, uh, that's a, maybe a longer term goal for me. Okay, good. Yeah, very nice. Very nice, guys. Some great language in the chat as well. Okay, um, so now that you've had a chance to see the questions and think about them, um, wh who would like to, um, to speak, uh, to, to give answering a question a try? Uh, if you can raise your hand um, or you can let me know in the chat, I will um, promote you to speaker, okay? And you can give a brief answer. So let's see. I think, uh, Zaid, you, you mentioned you're ready to speak. Would you like to answer a question? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Then... Okay, raising my hand, typing with one hand. <laughs> I got you. Okay, let's see, guys. I will uh, just find you here, and then we can try. So, um, let's see. Uh, 
sorry guys the um the chat is moving very quickly so it's hard to find you but one okay uh let's see right uh Mohammed, uh, I'm gonna Mohammed Abu Shihaida. I'm gonna promote you just now. Okay, so you're you can join uh, to speak now. Hi, Mohammed. Can you hear us? Okay. That should be you. I think you're muted. But there we go. Hi, Mohammed. Uh, uh, can you hear us there, Mohammed? Uh, I think your microphone is a bit quiet. Yep. Okay. Ah, yes. Hi, Mohammed. I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you for volunteering. Uh, which question would you like to answer? Um, the first one. Okay, great. So, Mohammed, can you tell me when do you wake up? Uh, I usually wake up around uh, four thirty in the morning. <clears throat> okay, and um, why? The, uh, I can find some time for myself to study on my Turkish lessons. <clears throat> Then it would be a great time to go for a walk. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm an early bird. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Mohammed. That was very, very good. Um, yeah, like you said, I can find some time for myself, uh, which is excellent. Nice, nice expression. Um, just to say, if you, um, you know, you can say, I like to get up at uh, five um, or at was it four o'clock? Because, because. So make sure you, you give a reason to develop the answer. Um, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, would you. anyone uh, else like to give an answer? Let's see. Um, we have uh, Rudra Raju. Uh, let me find you here. And I will um, just find you here. Okay, Rudra. Yep. Okay, uh, Rudra Raju, uh, I have promoted you now, so you should be able to speak in a moment. Uh, Sorry, guys, this sometimes takes a little bit of time. Uh, you, ah, there we go. Hi there. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. What about you? Great. Um, uh, Rudra, which question would you like to answer? I just want to know about the last question. Ah, the last question. So what would you like to change in your daily routine? Can you give me a brief answer, a little bit answer to that? Oh, you, you'd like to hear a brief answer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you wanted to give a brief answer. So would you like to try to answer? No. No. Okay. No problem. We'll see. Okay. Sky, would you like to give an answer for this question? Yeah. I yeah. will. Yeah. I'll find you. Okay. Thank you, Rudra. All right. We'll find an answer for you. So uh, let's see. Cool. Okay. Sky, I am promoting you to speaker now. And you should be able to speak just now. Hello. Hello. Hi, is that um, um, I'm doing good, thanks. Yeah, excellent. Um, welcome, welcome Sky, nice to speak to you uh, at last. You've been a regular with our webinars. So, um, Sky, Thank you. 
Um, could you give us a quick, uh, well, a brief answer to the final question? What would you like to change in your daily routine? Uh, well, in the evening, I often uh, call it a day to uh, watch television and uh, some movies, but I think it was a little bit unproductive, so I would like to change it to uh, uh, something like reading books or studying so I could, uh, you know, perform performance better at school. Yeah, F fantastic. Yeah, Sky, that's, that's an excellent answer, really. Um, yeah, nice use of language, call it a day, right? It means to, to finish work. Um, it's unproductive, you know, that's why you'd like to change um, your routine. And also just like, you know, as well, you said, you know, you know, it's unproductive. Um, this is a uh, nice sort of spoken English as well. Uh, very natural expression. So yeah, thank well you done. very much. Oh, great. A good delivery as well. Nice, uh, nice speed for delivery. Um, not too fast, not too slow, uh, quite smooth as well. So well done. Cool. Thank you very much. Hey, okay, welcome. Thank you. Right. Um, right, guys, we're going to go. Um, on to the next set of questions now. Uh, this is a different topic. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the topic of sport. Okay. Uh, this one has come up in recent tests. So let's take a look. Our first question we have a very Simple, straightforward question. Do you like to play any sports? Okay. <clears throat> Do you like to play any sports? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now, you don't want to say, yes, I do, right? Or no, I don't. It's too short. So, um, here's a, a better way to, to, to answer this. We can say, do you like to play any sports? Yes, I do actually. Um, my favorite sport is running. I'm a very keen runner. I like to um, run every day uh, to train and I'm also training for a number of different races. So I ran my first marathon uh, four weeks ago and I've just about recovered from that. So um, I'm planning to run some more races in the future. Okay, this would be uh, a fairly clear developed answer. Okay, um, give an example and be uh, specific, right? Good, uh, some questions. Should we be formal or casual? Um, not too formal, uh, Simbedi. It's okay to be a bit more casual and it's okay to use fillers. They are completely natural to say um and ah, uh, that's uh, fine. Okay, next question. Which sports are popular in your country? Well, you know, I'm from the UK, so obviously the most popular sport here is football. Um, it's hugely popular uh, with people both to watch and to play. Every town and city has its own sports team, has its own football team, uh, which people support. So I'd say football is the most popular one. Um, you know, another very popular sport is rugby as well. Uh, many people like to, to watch rugby too. So I'd say those are two of the most popular sports in the UK. Okay, that would be a fairly clear answer as well, right? <clears throat> uh, some of you are saying, what if I'm not interested in sport? Uh, yeah, uh, you can absolutely, you can say I'm not interested in it at all, as long as you give uh, reasons, okay? And yeah, yeah, excellent. And of course, you can use uh, whichever sport is popular in your country, okay? Um, Third question on this topic, we have, oh, sorry guys. Who is your favorite sports star? Okay, so slightly different question. Um, 
Well, if you ask me, I don't, I'm not a big fan of sports. I prefer playing sports rather than watching sports. But if I had to choose one person who I think is, uh, who I admire, I'd probably choose Tyson Fury. He is the newly crowned heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And uh, he has given a lot of his money to charity. He's also being very open about his mental health problems, which I think is a nice change from uh, a lot of celebrities. So if I had to choose one sporting star, um, I'd probably choose uh, Tyson Fury. Um, but yeah, exactly. Mohammed. Mohammed Ali would be a great choice as well. Um, yeah, some of you are, are asking very sensible questions. Uh, Henny, I don't play and I don't watch sports. How can I answer this exactly? I would suggest two, there's two things you can do, okay? You can say, I, you can be honest and you can say, look, I'm, I actually don't watch sports at all. I'm just not interested in sports. I, um, because, you know, when I was a child, I was more interested in studying at school rather than playing sports. Um, so I don't really have a, fav a favorite sports star. Um, you know, um, I am really interested in music, though. And if you ask me about my favorite music star, I'd probably say this person, you know, or you could say, you know, I don't have a favorite sports star, but I know that this person is very famous. Um, yeah, Salah, the answer is you should keep speaking until the examiner kind of stops you as well. So don't worry about it being too long, okay? Um, so, yeah. Um, and yeah, you need to try and answer the, the question, Banu. So the other option is you can just lie. Okay, you can make up the sports star. So, you know, my favorite sports star is Messi, like, or Ronaldo, because just someone you know, right? Uh, and you could say, like, I think he's an amazing football player. You can, you can kind of make it up, okay? But yeah, it's difficult if you really don't have an idea. Um, this is why it's good to prepare, you know, on some common topics. So think about a famous person, right? It doesn't need to be a sports star. If you're asked about um, a famous sports star or a famous musician, you can kind of change the topic to, um, yeah, yeah, to, to that person. Uh, William, that's a really good suggestion in the chat. Yeah, you use most of your time to study for a degree. Okay, final question for this set is, whoop, excuse me guys, uh, do young people in your country like to do physical exercise? Okay, we can all answer this question. So um, I'd say, yeah, these days young people um, in the UK uh, do do a lot of different sports and activities. I think you know, nowadays there's a lot of um, digital uh, activities that uh, people like to do online. So they might play online games. Uh, they might spend a lot of time on social media. But I think there's also still, you know, a lot more activities uh, that people can do uh, for exercise as well. So a lot of children are part of sports clubs at schools. They, um, you know, might do not just football or rugby, but they might go kayaking or climbing or play basketball, um, go hiking or hill walking. So, you know, yeah, I think uh, these days there are a lot more options, not just spending time online. Okay, so yeah. And again, exactly, it depends. You could add, argue both ways, okay? <clears throat> Uh, Mohammed, that's a good question. Can you change the topic? You can a little bit, okay? 
you can't just start talking about a completely different subject, but if you can link it to the question in a natural way, then that's okay, right? So, you know, if they say, who's your favorite sports star? Well, you know, look, I really don't have a favorite sports star. I'm just not interested in sport at all. Um, what I'm really interested in is music. And actually my favorite musician is blah, right? You're, you're answering the question and you're changing the topic to something that you're more comfortable with that's still related to the question. So that would be okay, right? But you can't just say, well, my favorite musician is blah, because it's, you know, it's not a natural way of answering the question. Okay, and yes, Simbedi, it's fine to take a pause between the question or between sentences, um, that's better. Just take a moment, think about what you want to say, and then say it, right? Okay. Right, guys, we're going to push on um, so we get a chance to look at some other topics, and then we'll have some... <laughs> very good, Stephen. We'll have some uh, uh, chance to practice as well. So our next topic uh, that has been reported, what can you see here? It's related to our part one topic about daily routine. It is about waking up early. Okay, so this one, this is part two. We need to speak for two minutes, okay? Um, kind of a surprising topic, especially if you sleep in every day till late, it's going to be difficult for you to answer. So good to, good to try and, you know, have some important events that you can talk about, right? So when I saw this, uh, the last time I, well, I get up early quite a lot, but a thing that's easy for me to speak about was a few weeks ago, I had to get up very early at 4 a.m. to run a marathon, okay? Uh, the race started at six. I had to wake up early so I could get there on time. Now, I can talk about that experience all day, right? Because um, it's very special to me. So try, before you go into the test, choose some special experience that you can talk about that, you know, maybe you didn't wake up early, right? Maybe the marathon started at, you know, 11 a.m., not 6 a.m. But I can just say, well, I had to get up at 6 a.m., to go to the marathon, and then I'll start talking about the marathon, right? Uh, so you can adapt the topic to the specific question. Um, and that will save you having to think about all the details, choose the topic and think about the details in the test. It's too much to, to practice, okay? So yeah, exactly. Um, trying to choose the topic. It's better if you can have the topic ready and adapt it to the specific question. So guys, I'm not going to talk for two minutes, but I'll give you an example here. Um, a useful structure you can use um, is to introduce the topic, talk about the background, right, of the occasion, describe what happened, give an opinion, and then discuss the future, right? Don't worry about working through the cue points on the cue card, uh, the bullet points. The bullet points are just there to help you, right? They're not, the examiner is not reading them to check that you've mentioned every point, okay? The, ex the, the bullet points are just there to help you get some idea of what to say for two minutes, but it's not essential. So um, don't focus too much on the bullet points. That might help you, um, you know, go, if you focus too much, you might go through it too quickly, okay? Um, so instead, we're gonna look at the introduction, past, description, opinion, and future. 
here we go. Um, so, right, I, uh, today I'd like to talk about a time where I had to get up very early in the morning. Um, I'm, I'm choosing to tell you about this time because it was a very special experience that happened to me quite recently. Basically, uh, it happened about four weeks ago when I ran my first marathon. Uh, so I had to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning uh, to prepare for the race, which started at 6 a.m. And, you know, the reason why I was running the marathon is because I decided that um, I'd been training for a whole year um, to build up to this race. And this was the, the final, uh, you know, goal of all my training. I um, had to wake up at four so that I could eat some food and drink some coffee get changed, get ready, um, and get down to the start of the race. Uh, it was a really big race. So there were around 30,000 people. So we really needed time to get through all the crowds. Um, you know, at first I felt um, quite tired, but then I um, woke up. Once I got there, the atmosphere was electric. I felt really energized and, um, you know, I was ready to run uh, the race. And, you know, it, it was very tough, but uh, I did finish. And in retrospect, it was an enjoyable experience. I'm planning to do another marathon here in Edinburgh in May. Um, so I'm training again for that. Okay. So guys, that was my talk. Um, I think it was a bit under two minutes, but you get the idea. Um, you can go into detail. Um, so, yeah. Um, and you can follow the structure I just outlined. Now, guys, I'm looking at some of your questions. Yeah, Simbedi, good question. If you stop after one minute, will the examiner help you by asking more questions? <laughs> Or will you have to dig yourself out of the grave? Uh, I'm afraid, Simbedi, it is the latter. You will have to find a way to keep going, okay? If you stop after one minute, the only thing the examiner can do, first, they'll kind of go like this, right? They won't speak, they'll just gesture. And this is to encourage you to keep going, okay? If you don't keep going, they'll then say, hmm, can you tell me any more about that? Okay, that's your sign, like you need to, to keep going. You need to try to find more to say. So this is why we um, suggest uh, the, um, the structure where you start in the past, you describe the event, and then you give your opinion. And then if you have time, you can start talking about the future, okay? So if you're really running out of things to say, think about, well, would you like to do this again in the future? Um, what's your opinion on it? Uh, would you recommend it to other people? And that can just give you a bit more information to carry you over the two minute mark. Okay, um, yeah, and Henny, yes, you can take notes on the question um, for one minute before you start speaking. Sticks, uh, my answer, I can't really evaluate it because I was, I'm not listening to it at the same time, but uh, yeah, I mean, my fluency was pretty good. I used some nice language, probably like, band eight overall. I won't say it's the best because I didn't have time to plan it, right? Um, but with a bit more time, I'd use a bit more advanced vocabulary. That would probably increase the score to a nine. I'd say my grammar was a, a nine because I used a nice range. I was using I had been, um, I had done, 
uh, I plan to like, so talking about a range of different uh, uh, tenses and sentence types. Okay, good. Right guys, time to go. That's a great answer, Sion, uh, in the comments there. Excellent. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh, can anyone guess what the topic is here? It's kind of connected <clears throat> to our previous uh, topic. So, you know, part three is always, uh, the topic is connected to the part two topic, right? So in this case, very good, Ali and Varun. Uh, it is time management, time management. So the examiner will say, you know, we've been talking about a time you um, had to wake up early. I'd now like to ask you some more general questions about this. Let's talk now about time management. Uh, they'll say, you know, do you think people need to have a day-to-day -day plan? Can people still achieve their tasks if they don't plan them? Uh, what do you think uh, for this? So, uh, so yeah, a lot of you saying, uh, yes, you need to have goals and yeah, Planning is important, exactly. <laughs> it's a tricky question. Can I think for a moment? Uh, you won't have time to say this. You're, you, you shouldn't say this in, in the test, Abdurami. You've kind of got to just give an answer. <clears throat> you can say, hmm, that's a good question. Well, and then answer. So, I said, hmm, well, that's a good question. You know, I'd say that you know, overall, people don't need to have a day-to-day -day plan. It's not essential. You can still get things done uh, without having a plan or, you know, a detailed schedule. However, I'd say that, you know, to effectively achieve your long-term goals, it's good to have a strategy. And part of that strategy is to do daily planning, to review your goals, to make sure that they are... Uh, focused on achieving those longer term objectives that you have. Um, otherwise, you might just be very, very busy getting things done all day, but you're not really, um, you know, being strategic in your actions. So uh, that would be my one answer to that. Okay. <clears throat> one thing to note there is I paraphrased the, the language. So achieve tasks, uh, goals, strategy, objectives. It's nice to vary the vocabulary there, okay? Um, yeah, somebody, you, you know, you don't need to answer right away, but you can take a breath and then give an answer. Um, for part two, you have one minute to plan, so but part one and part three, you need to answer as if it's like an interview, basically. And Nargisa, that's a great question. Can we give personal examples in this part? No, you should avoid personal examples in part three. Um, the focus is general rather than personal. So you want to talk more about what people do in general right? So you can still say, you know, most people in my country do this, or some people do that, rather than saying, I do this, or, you know, my colleague does that. Um, try to speak in general terms. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Very nice answer there, Rene. Excellent. Okay, next question. Do you think it's possible for people to learn to manage their time? It's uh, another interesting question. Uh, 
good question, Mohammed. I'll answer this in a, in a moment. What do you think? Do we think it's possible for people to learn to manage their time? Yeah. And yeah, whenever you're saying absolutely yes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, good. You're a, yeah, it depends on your will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very. I'm getting some great suggestions here, guys. So, um, yeah. And I would say, yeah, absolutely. It's possible for people to learn to manage their time more effectively. You know, there are various strategies and tools you can use, um, especially in you know, today's world with, we have different apps, uh, different online uh, programs we can use. Uh, one example, uh, for example, that was brought in fairly recently is the Pomodoro technique uh, to manage uh, your uh, workload into 20 minute chunks. Uh, so uh, yeah, if, if people have the will to go out and research these uh, these techniques, then absolutely it's possible for them. Okay, good. Yeah, and I can see, guys, some a lot of you have questions about how long the answer should be. Okay, now there isn't an exact figure for this, right? It's not like each one should be 30 seconds or each one should be five sentences. It depends. Some of the answers can be a bit longer. Some of them can be a bit shorter. Um, basically, you, the idea is that you develop your ideas and that they are coherent. So this means that they make sense, right? they follow on from one another and you don't just stop unnaturally, right? You kind of bring, ideally you bring your answer to a close. If you're going on for, for too long, the examiner might ask you to, to stop. They'll say, okay, that's, that's fine. What about this? Um, don't worry if they stop you. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Um, it just means that they need to ask more questions to you, right? So, um, like, so you want to avoid giving too shorter answers, right? Because um, you need to develop them. But you also want to avoid just going on and on and on and repeating yourself, right? because you don't need to keep speaking, you know, for so long. So this is why we recommend just, you know, trying to give a reason and an example, right? And then wrapping up. So why don't we time the next answer and we'll see how long it, it takes and that will give you some idea, right? Um, if you've got a stopwatch at home, feel free to start it, right? And we'll take a look at this next one. So, oh, right. Okay, so our next question, what are some possible advantages of using a time management app for your phone to help you plan your time? Ooh. Okay, let's start. So, wow, this is a great question actually. Um, so, I think time management apps can be so helpful for people, um, especially if they're a bit disorganized like me. Um, one of the great things is that you can take it with you wherever you go. Um, people can carry them around in their pocket and they can provide reminders uh, for people automatically. So if someone has a bad memory, um, you know, their phone is always with them. It can give you notifications and reminders and, uh, you know, it helps people to stay organized. Uh, it's more of an active uh, device rather than, you know, just a diary or a planner. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of the advantages of having a time management app. Okay. So guys, that was 53 seconds, right? I was speaking quite quickly there. Um, 
you don't necessarily need to say so much, okay? Um, but uh, if you're, you know, I don't, over a minute probably is getting, yeah, you know, that, again, I don't want to give you an exact number of seconds, right? Because it will depend on how fast you speak, how long your answer is, how much detail you want to go into, okay? But try making sure that you summarize at the end can be a nice way to, to round up your answer. Okay, let's take a look at this next question. We'll see how long we go for there. Why do you think some people don't plan their day in advance? Why do you think some people don't plan their day in advance? So, yeah, um, well, <laughs> well, I think there are a number of different reasons why people might not plan their day in advance. I mean, some people uh, maybe are just a bit lazy and they don't like to be organized. Um, so they might just want to relax as well and, you know, to feel like they're free. Um, I think other people maybe want to be a bit more uh, flexible in their time. Uh, they like to be spontaneous. Uh, they might be very creative and they might find that, you know, not planning their day, uh, you know, each step by step can help them uh, to be more creative in their work. So I think it really depends if you're a highly organized person, um, you know, with a very clear goal in mind, then it could help you to plan your day. Whereas if you're, your work is more creative or, you know, you are more of a free spirit, then planning your day is not essential. Okay. Again, guys, that was about one minute, eight seconds. Again, I speak probably more quickly. Um, so, you know, you might speak for a bit longer or you might speak for a bit less. Um, but, you know, as long as you develop your idea, you know, and again, this, we're looking at, this example is probably closer to a band nine. So, you know, saying a bit less, uh, giving a shorter answer, you can still achieve band seven band six, band eight, okay? Um, body language, Sibedi, is, it's personal. It's not necessary. Um, it might help you to, you know, feel more comfortable if you can open up your body. If you're very nervous and stressed and eye contact down here, right, then it's gonna make your voice very quiet and maybe your intonation a bit more flat, right? So no, you're not judged on your body language, but you are, or your eye contact, <clears throat> but you are judged on the tone of your voice and, and speaking more clearly and directly and kind of with a bit of a smile and a bit of energy, that is likely to improve your, uh, your score, okay. Right, uh, good. Okay, guys, we are coming up to the end of the session. So I don't think we need to go over it. Well, what I might do is give you a couple more topics so you can at least see the questions, okay? And then we can just discuss some of your questions about the speaking test, because I can see you've got some really great questions there. Um, if you can start putting your questions into the Q&A, oh, I can see there's a lot already. We will uh, go through some of them in a moment. Just the final set of questions here. This is about business, small business. Describe a small, a successful small business you know about. This is a part two topic, it may come up, okay? Um, for the next set of questions, this is also about business, but success in business. So here are some examples. 
what qualities are required to be a company leader, what factors will determine whether a small business will be successful or not, do you think technology plays an important role in a company's development, and should charities be run more like private businesses in order to achieve their goals? So maybe for homework from this class, you can have a think about how you would answer these questions, okay? On running a small business and running a successful business. I know these ones are a little bit harder, Yure. Um, okay, and you know, it may be that the examiner will choose an easier set of questions for you, depending on your level in part three. They can choose between uh, three possible sets of questions. So CEO uh, is chief executive officer, uh, which means the boss. Yeah, very good blessing. The, the boss of the company, the director of the company. <laughs> Don't, don't feel desperate, Stick. She'll be fine, okay? You'll be fine. Okay. Right, guys, um, let's take a quick look at some of these questions and then we'll wrap up for today. So, um, let's see. I've answered this one already. No private examples in part three, please. Keep it to general examples. The examiner will try to move you away from talking about uh, personal examples. Okay. Yes, Huawei, the, the questions do change um, each. Like, there's a bank of questions. There's a very large bank of questions. They periodically add um, new questions and take away other questions. So, you know, there's no guarantee these questions will come up because there are a huge number of them, but it's helpful to be prepared. Okay, um, Deep, how many parts are there in the speaking test? Three parts. What's the flow of the test? Um, part, first introduction, simple questions about yourself. What's your name? Uh, where are you from? Can I see your ID? Short answers for this part. Part one three sets of questions, personal topics about you, about uh, familiar things, sports, daily routines, uh, this kind of thing. Part two, two minute talk, one minute to prepare um, on uh, an event, a person, a place, an occasion. You need to speak for two minutes. Part three, two sets of questions on uh, a topic related to part two. So in this case, it's about business. These are general questions related um, about uh, the world, about your country, about people in general. Okay, I'll just skip back, guys, to the part two. Uh, there you go. So you can see this one. Uh, anonymous, do we have to avoid saying some words? No. Uh, don't be rude, <laughs> don't swear, uh, maybe don't use too much slang because the examiners just might not understand it. So, you know, but otherwise, yeah, uh, any words should be fine. Uh, okay, you can try, if you want to try the speaking test, um, Iola, we offer a mock speaking test via our website, um, ieltsonlinetest.com. Let me just, uh, sorry guys, I will just find the link to that so I can put it in the chat and then we'll come back. And um, there we go. Okay. And sorry, as I'm just putting the link to some of our resources in the chat just now. What's up, Stephen? You said, um, oh no, has something gone wrong? No, no, we're still here. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So, 
<laughs> can't tell me. Okay, it's your secret. That's fine. Uh, let's see. We okay. There we go. Finally, guys, I managed to paste that into the chat. So, <clears throat> yeah, good question here from anonymous. Um, if we encounter the question, what type? can we always divide the answer into two types like when i but yeah um yeah anonymous there's uh that's a good point there there is often a describe type question right and in part three uh, it can also come up in part one as well but very common in part three what type of you know small businesses are successful in your country. Can you tell me some of the types of small business that are successful? Can you tell me some of the qualities of a, a good CEO? These are, you know, uh, describe questions. And yeah, you can say, well, you know, one type of is this, and another type of is that, right? If you can, it's good to try and describe two types. Um, but if you go into enough detail, you could get away with just answering one type. Okay. Right, guys, I'm gonna take a couple more questions and then we're gonna have to go. Okay, so I'm looking at the ones in the Q&A uh, to find a good question. Ah, this is a very good question. Uh, I think it's Sadiq. Uh, I have a question related to speaking part one. If the question is about my country or again, which sport uh, or which sport in my country, should I speak about the country where I was born or the country where I'm currently based? Okay. Um, uh, Sadiq, it's entirely up to you, right? It, it, you can say, well, you know, I've been living, um, you know, in the UK for the last five years. So let me tell you about sports in the UK, right? Or you can even just say, well, you know, my, um, my country is, you know, yeah, just say, well, in my country, their football is really popular, right? You don't even need to say, well, actually, I don't live here. Just, just say my country, right? The examiner doesn't, doesn't mind that. Okay. Right. Guys, I'm afraid we have run out of time, uh, so we're going to have to wrap up. I hope you enjoyed uh, the session. I think uh, it seems to have been very popular, so we will probably be running more sessions uh, in a similar format, okay, in the next week or so. So keep a lookout on our website. And uh, yeah, you can register for all our upcoming webinars there. So thank you very much. Uh, it's been lovely to see you all. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Okay, bye-bye for now.